Hey, welcome to the Bootstrap 4 Alpha tutorial. My name is Brad Hussey from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. And in this course, I'm gonna be taking you through what's new in Bootstrap 4, all the new features, plus we're gonna be building three custom websites using the updated framework. So let's jump in. So what's new in Bootstrap 4? With over 120,000 new lines of code, Mark Otto and Jacob Thornton, the creators of Bootstrap, and the open source community of bootstrappers out there have pushed Bootstrap 4 well into its alpha phase. A little disclaimer though, you should never use an alpha version of software for production, meaning you shouldn't use alpha for professional client projects because alpha can change at any time. They can take anything out and put something new in and you'll be left with something different than what you started with. So word from the wise, be careful when you're using alpha on any important projects. Try to use it just for practice until it is in full force launch mode. Bootstrap has also changed its underlying style sheet preprocessor from less to SAS. SAS is quite popular among the community of front end developers out there, and I quite like SAS, but I tend to use less more, if that makes any sense, just because I started using less before SAS. But because Bootstrap 4 is now using SAS, I've been forced to figure it out, and it's actually quite fun. We'll get a little taste of how SAS works a little later in the course. Plus, I will give you my professional workflow when I work on SAS projects for clients. Bootstrap has also made more sophisticated improvements to the grid system. But don't worry because the markup for creating a grid is essentially the exact same as what it was in Bootstrap 3. The most significant change in regards to the grid is that they switched from using pixel-based or percentage-based measurements to rem-based CSS units. This means that the spacing and the grid itself is dynamic and based on the HTML root of the document. We'll get into that later as well. Bootstrap 4 has also included Flexbox support, which is pretty cool. And if you've never heard of Flexbox, then you're in for a treat. To learn a little bit more about Flexbox, I suggest you check out Chris Coyer's article all about Flexbox, and I'll put it right here somewhere around my face or in the link description or somewhere around this lecture that's very easy for you to click on so you can learn all all about Flexbox. They've also totally removed the wells, thumbnails, and panels component for a totally new component called cards. Basically a card is an individual content block that's highly customizable, has a ton of options, and we'll be playing with those later in this course. Another totally geeky feature they've added to Bootstrap 4 is the reboot. And that's basically their version of the normalize and reset CSS file. If you're really into reset and normalize CSS files, feel free to geek out about that on your own time. Because we're using SAS, they've also added a whole bunch of SAS variables in a single customizable file, which basically makes it incredibly easy for you to jump into that variables file and switch and customize almost the entire project super easy without digging through a ton of CSS files. They've also dropped Internet Explorer 8 like it's hot. So the guys over at Bootstrap just decided that they were annoyed and bored with Internet Explorer 8, like all of us, and just put it on a timeout forever. And without Internet Explorer 8 holding them back, basically they can use the best parts of CSS without having to hack it apart in order to compensate for such a bad browser. If you really need Internet Explorer 8, support, then just use Bootstrap 3. Plus they've improved a whole bunch of new things like the JavaScript plugins, they've added more CSS styles, they have better tool tips, improved documentation, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But whatever, honestly, we're probably only gonna use 20% of the new features before they come out with Bootstrap 5 anyway. And one last thing before I go and head behind the computer to show you how to bootstrap. They have an entire community of bootstrappers out there, plus they've created a Slack channel for all of you bootstrappers out there, if you're interested, all you have to do is head over to bootstrap-slack.herokuapp.com. And I'll put that in the description, I'll put it on the screen, I'll do all the things to make it easy for you to get there. So hang tight because in the next video, we're gonna jump right in behind the computer and we're going to learn how to install Bootstrap 4 and then we're gonna carry on with all the fun stuff. So I'll see you there.